Hey fragrance junkies, this is K-Love's Perfume. Welcome back, or if you're new here, subscribe down below to join in on my perfume addiction. Hey, I have fragrances that are worth the hype and fragrances that are not worth the hype. So you know me, I'm gonna keep it a hundred, a hundred, whatever the kids are saying nowadays, I keep it 100 with you. Um, I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's so good because my dear friend has it and loves it. No, I'm not like that. No, if I don't like it, I'm gonna tell you that I don't like it. And all right, I got some here that I don't freaking like or they're not worth the hype. And then I got some here that are freaking worth the hype. So let's get right on into it. I started off with Nina Risi Rose Extase Absolute. This fragrance is a jammy rose benzoin combo super creamy thick rich this smells like oud satin mood by mason francis curtisjean because this is also from mason francis curtisjean and it smells like oud satin mood minus the oud so it takes that depth and masculine edge out of it and it's leaving a feminine jammy thick rose combination it's beautiful and it's very, very beast mode projection. It lasts about five, six hours, but the projection is beast. Like you spray it in one room, you'll smell it on the other side of the house. It's that type of fragrance and it leaves a trail as you go places. So yeah, check out Nina Risi Rose Extase Absolute. I don't know where you can find this anymore because it's been hyped up. It hit the hype train and I got it before it hit the hype train. So. I don't know what to tell you. You have to scavenge for this one. Nina Risi Rose Extase Absolute. Okay, so I'm not the type of person that just gets my recommendations from the YouTube community. I adore um, Fragcom. Like, I like the Facebook groups. I like the um, Fragrantica groups. I like the forums, base notes, all of that, Profumo. Like, I like that type of stuff because those people are real with you and they'll tell you if something is like not good. YouTubers, a little bit fake, a little bit phony here and there. So, and some of them get sent PR and stuff. So they're not going to tell you the truth. They're, they're like, I like this free stuff. So let me just lie to you a little bit and spin you a story because then I get more free stuff, you know. Well, anyways, so this fragrance is from one of the forums. This is like a vintage -y fragrance. It's not really talked about on YouTube. This is called Tokade from Rokas. This is from the 90s. This is the thickest ambery vanilla jammy rose. Vintage vibe, just gorgeous. Think of a woman in a red dress, sexy date night, like long lasting beast mode projection and there is a niche fragrance on the market that took on inspiration from this killian woman in gold smells like tokade from rokas so i think this is on fragrance x for 25 dollars. so definitely get your hands on this this is wow like wow in a bottle it's hard to describe something that you need to sniff. If you take in my recommendations for vintage fragrances, you need to check out Tokade from Roka's. Like, literally stop what you're doing, buy it. It's $25 on Fragrance X, just get it. Thank me later, sweetheart. Tokade from Roka's. I just have a mini, like, 1.6 ounce bottle of this. This is not my bottle, this is Nancy's bottle, but I use it as reference for a little bit. I'm gonna buy a big ass bottle of this in the EDP formulation rather than the EDT. This is worth the hype. There is a reason that this fragrance, ignore the background, <laughs> that's my son, one of my sons. Anyways, this fragrance has stood the test of time for a reason. This is a beautiful oriental vanilla fragrance. Starts off with a burst of lime and bergamot then it leads into a smoky, leathery, incense world that then turns into a beautiful, smoky, powdery vanilla that resembles creme brulee. Do you like my description? I tried to describe it as best I could because 
this fragrance right here is absolutely incredible. If you like vintages, like why haven't you already tried Shalimar? Like just go try Shalimar. I mean, if you're into thick, heavy oriental fragrances, you're missing out if you haven't tried Shalimar from Gillan. Next, I have a decant of La Danza Del from Nobile 1942. I'll put the photo right here. Gorgeous. Apple fragrance. Smells like an apple candle, like an apple fall candle, apple with a hint of cinnamon, some vanilla, like apple pie, basically. This just smells to me like apple pie with a little bit of a sparkling fresh quality to it. It's beautiful. It's close to the skin, so this is for you to enjoy. Yeah, this is just, wow, really nice fragrance. Definitely check this out. La Danza Del from Nobile 1942. All right, let me hit you with another sample that I need to purchase because I blew through my sample. That's My Burberry Black. My Burberry Black is just a thick, rich, ambery peach fragrance with patchouli. It's just rich, vintagey, thick, absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Like, I need to buy it ASAP, but you know, I uh, kind of splurged in November, so I'm kind of taking like a little bit of a break from going crazy and buying stuff. But my Burberry Black is just simply one of the best fragrances that's designer. Literally one of the best designer fragrances on the market. My Burberry Black from Burberry is definitely worth the hype. All right, I got another sample for you. Unknown Pleasures from Kerosene, worth the hype, like 100%. This smells like a lemon cookie and is bright and lemony at first and, and cookie-ish at first and then it leads into these buttery biscuit dry down. It's super unique, better than Lyra. It's along the lines of Lyra, but in my opinion, a step up from that. Definitely worth the hype. Unknown Pleasures from Kerosene. Another one that's worth the hype is Dates Delight from the House of Oud. This one is a thick, jammy date fragrance with amber, vanilla, spice, like so much cinnamon. It's just, this is my second favorite fragrance in my whole collection. Like, I mean, it will never be better than Fate. Like I haven't found anything better than Fate from Homage, but this is close runner up. This is good. This is like good, good. So definitely check out this fragrance. This is Date's Delight from the House of Oud. One worth the hype is Oud Vanille from Frank Oliver. This literally costs like 20 bucks. Smells like vanilla in Oud. It smells honestly along the lines of Oud Bouquet from Lancome. Beautiful, super long lasting, super beast mode, $20. Just go get it. Shut up, shut up, stop what you're doing and just go get it. Go get it along with this and that's like 40 bucks. Like go to Fragrance X, 40 bucks. Come on, I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong for 40 bucks getting those two. Literally, they smell so expensive. All right, Oud Vanille from Frank Oliver, worth the hype. Oud Bouquet from Lancome, worth the hype. Thick, rich, decadent, smoky, beautiful, divine. Definitely get this if you're wanting to explore and you're a gourmand lover or a rose lover. Oud Bouquet, worth the hype. Okay, okay, I threw in one that's I kind of hyped up. That's Taboo by Dana. This is like $10. It smells like sex. Like, not like sex, but like a sexy woman. Sexy lady. That's what it smells like. Like, this is sex appeal in a bottle that's marketed towards old ladies. <laughs> Literally. And, ooh, it smells so good. I need to get like 20 bottles of this. Yeah. This is... 
perfect. This is cloves, amber, vanilla. It's just, go get it. You just go get it. If you want to branch out and check out vintages, get Taboo from Dana. Worth the hype. All right, are you ready for fragrances not worth the hype? Thumbs down, not worth the hype. All right, first we got Cashmere from Chopard. I was expecting a thick, rich, decadent oriental vanilla. Instead, what I was left with was a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> Literally smells like a Cabbage Patch doll's head. It's not thick. It's not rich. I mean, it's all right. It's okay. I don't hate it. I'm going to keep it in my collection, but it's not thick, rich, like ooh, this one is thick, rich, decadent. This is thin and light. It's not my favorite. Not worth the hype. Next we have Baccarat Rouge. Yes, I know, I know. She put a niche fragrance in there. Oh my god. Okay, yeah. So Baccarat Rouge is not worth the price point. Definitely go with Spiritu from Tiziana Terenzi if you still want to stay in the niche realm but yet smell like Baccarat. Um, Burberry Her is a girly alternative. Cloud is a loud synthetic coconut alternative. This is synthetic too. I mean, literally smells like salty cotton candy. And then it goes away and it comes back. I wear my fragrances for myself. I don't want my fragrance to disappear and then have everybody around me smell it from miles away. I don't need that attention. I'm married. I don't, I don't care for the attention. But I want a fragrance that I want to be able to smell on myself. And so... Sorry for the yelling. That's one of my kids. Um, I have two toddler boys. Um, I recommend getting a dupe from like Dua or Alexandria Fragrances or any like dupe house that has a dupe of Baccarat Rouge 540. Get that instead of the actual thing. Not worth the hype. Don't hate me. Alright, this is Mon Guerlain from Guerlain. I mean... It's beautiful lavender vanilla, tonka, licorice. I like it. It just doesn't last very long and then it gets super like synthetic vanilla and cloying. Like not a good realistic vanilla. Like a, a sweet synthetic type of vanilla. So it's not my favorite and I'm, I hate to say it, I'm probably going to declutter this and go for Lancome Lavandus Tryon. However you say it, the Lavender Lancome fragrance. Yeah, not worth the hype. Sorry, Mon All right, I'm back again with another disappointingness. Okay, so Chanel number five is kind of boring. Like, sweetheart, where's the spice? Where's the interestingness? You smell like a basic bitch. <laughs> and I'm not sorry, but you smell like a basic bitch, Chanel number five. This is a vintage, too. I'm like, literally smells like yellow flowers and soap. <laughs> sorry, Chanel. But you're number five. Mm -mm. Coco from Chanel, on the other hand. It's really good. It's spicy, sexy, alluring, different. There's depth to it. It's interesting. It's not a basic bitch fragrance. So yeah, sorry Chanel number five, but you're basic. So not worth the hype. All right, I'm definitely gonna keep this. I love it, but I'm gonna say it's not worth the hype because there is an interesting opening to it. All right, this is Rose's Berberenza from Mason Lancome. When you first spray it on, you get this blast of salty pistachios, which gives off a foot smell, like a literal dirty man foot smell. So be aware of that when you purchase this, but the dry down makes it literally worth it. It's like 
so yummy. What are you wearing? I'm wearing Unknown Pleasures Burberry Black and Roses for Brenda. Let's see if I can get that foot smell. Yeah, there it is. It's that freaking um pistachio. Yeah, she's giving me the old dirty stanky foot. But I don't get it as bad as I used to. Like when I first tried the fragrance, I didn't understand, hey, that's pistachio. Now I kind of get it. So I'm like, oh, that's not feet. That's pistachio. If that even makes sense. But it's the, it's so good. Such a beautiful, boozy, like, it's like roses and wine with treats. It's just so good. All right, Roses Berberenz is not worth the hype to blind buy. I, I mean, I would suggest testing this out. Like, literally. Yeah, have your friend send you a decant of this. Like, test this out. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're back on to the samples. Good Girl from Carolina Herrera has a beautiful promising opening. You're like, oh my gosh, it's kind of chocolatey, it's thick, it's like a nougat, it's warm, it's rich, it's beautiful. And then the dry down hits and you're like, oh my gosh, I have a headache. And it literally smells like stanky white flowers and perfume, like it's perfumey. Yeah, sorry, good girl, but you didn't work out. Um, so not worth the hype. Sorry. All right, Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb Nectar. Mmm, not worth the hype. It literally, to me, smells like you stanked up a room with patchouli. Like, you took a fat freaking S-H-I-T and you sprayed some kind of patchouli spray or... No, wait, let me re-describe this. Okay, you took a fat shit, and then you covered it up with some Febreze. It's like you the shit is patchouli, and you're covering it up with something sweet. Does that make any sense? So yeah, Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb Nectar is not good. Um, the original Flower Bomb, I used to like it, but I'm not into these fruit chulies anymore. I'm more of a deep and resinous type fragrances person. But I'm not really this type of person anymore. Okay, so no. I would rather wear La Via Belle. I love La Via Belle. There's iris in there. Flower Bomb and Nectar from Richter, Victor and Rolf is a, not worth the hype. No. Alright, you can hate me if you want, but I think La Belle from Jean-Paul Gaultier is sexist. The bottle is disturbing. What woman is like... Walking around like this, I mean, <laughs> okay, what woman looks like that, for real? Unless you've had like 10,000 pounds of plastic surgery, you're not really gonna look like the bottle. So it kind of, to me, is a little disappointing. Fragrance itself opens up beautifully. You get the vetiver, you get the pear, and then this sickly sweet vanilla that comes out of nowhere destroys the whole fragrance and it's disgusting it's like super just thick and cloying nasty synthetic vanilla it doesn't even smell like vanilla it smells like you poured vanilla pudding in the fragrance it's i don't know how to describe it. maybe like vanilla air freshener it's not good sorry la belle but you were too sickly for me <laughs> not worth the hype Alright, although this bottle is absolutely divine, the fragrance itself stinks. Literally stinks. Alright, those of you on my channel know that I do not like grapey smelling things like grapey jasmine or grapey orange blossom. This is grapey orange blossom all the way. You're going to smell like grapes, so if you like grapes, buy Pure Excess from Paco Rabanne. But if you hate grapes and you hate super synthetic -y sweet fragrances, not worth the hype. Alright, last but not least, Zadig and Voltaire, this is her. <sighs> Starts off promising, like creamy whipped cream and woody sandalwood. 
then these like musky synthetic puke notes come out of nowhere and it ruins the whole fragrance it's disgusting and the sandalwood unfortunately is that synthetic non-realistic sandalwood that whatever that synthetic crap is that they have nowadays um sorry but no Sedigan Voltaire this isn't her <laughs> not worth the hype All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you weren't too offended. These are my opinions and everybody's got opinions, especially when it comes to fragrance. So you have to make the opinion for yourself. Don't go off a YouTuber's recommendation because most of them are phony and fake and you're not gonna get a realistic recommendation because they do get sent fragrances. They really do. And some of them will give you their honest opinions and some won't. So how do we weed out the ones that are giving us fake opinions? You don't know. So you're going to have to form opinions for yourself. Test out fragrances, swap decants with your friends, buy decants from Lucky Scent or eBay or wherever, Mercari, whatever. Buy used fragrances, buy partials. Um, you don't have to buy the full bottle. You need to try the fragrance first. I mean, practice what you preach, Kayleen. Do you practice that? Sometimes, sometimes I practice that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe to join in on my mother effing perfume addiction. Bye.